Hey guys, Rickster here, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing one of the most insane chapters of Garden of Banban -Ban of all time. Garden of Banban -Ban Chapter 6 was definitely one of the most insane yet confusing chapters of the series so far. And just when you thought the game was finally starting to make sense, well, they threw a giant wrench into the production. So today's video is going to be all about covering not only the story, but anything that you could have possibly missed, including Easter eggs and things that are going to make this series, well, make somewhat sense. So if that sounds good to you, grab a popcorn and a drink and let's go ahead and dive in. The story begins as our protagonist finally reaches the fifth floor. However, we're not alone. It seems that we've been accompanied by not only Sheriff Toadster but Stinger Flynn as well and we are here for one reason and one reason only. We need to find the pieces of the scepter in order to save the kingdom. Sheriff Toadster even explains that he can't even imagine what's happening on the floor above us. He says to picture it as a bunch of angry animals finally escaping with one capable of giving them peace and that is to get the scepter now those angry animals that he's discussing are the naughty ones and with questions whether the queen is even alive at this point we need to get to the scepter fast he explains that he has a place where we can hole up, basically a safe zone. He then goes into detail that if you stay into the darkness for too long, the naughty ones will find you and kill you. So making our way over along what looks to be a makeshift road and even a neighborhood. This place is familiar to a lot of the monsters in the game and Sheriff Toaster even explains that this is where he took refuge after being dumped. Now, who put him here? Who dumped him away? He explains that it was people just like our kind, meaning humans. He says that he has spent many cold nights down here and ones that he wishes he could forget. But most importantly, that the door will activate and this is where the scepter is held. The only way to activate it, however, is to find four switches that are scattered across different sectors of the floor. So after scaling up a couple of pipes, we end up in this house-like region. In this region, it is very important that we locate the drone lights because that's the only way we're going to be able to travel around this area. However, upon stumbling across the drone lights, we find something even more unexpected. It almost looks like an anteater style monster and wearing some type of ballerina outfit as she begins to dance closer and closer to us, eventually attacking. However, upon awakening, we find the last and final piece to attach the lights to our drone and escape somewhat safely. And that's when you notice Bambolina is now talking to Sheriff Toadster. However, she doesn't remember who exactly entrapped her in the last chapter. And Sheriff Toadster gives her a couple hints, basically explaining that it was somebody really handsome, but he's not sure who it was either. He then instructs us to find the first switch inside of the sector off to the right hand side of the building. And then he talks to Miss Mason, AKA Bambolina basically telling her to get some rest and that we'll take care of it from here. And so we begin our journey through the darkness and in doing so, we hear some very creepy laughter. This sinister laughter can only be from one thing and one thing only, it's the naughty ones. So be very careful as we make our way through this area because if you do step into the darkness for too long, well, they will attack. But after some distance, we do stumble across the introduction sector. This sector is important. It was used basically as a meeting room and you can tell by the giant projector on the wall. However, this room is used to find our first puzzle in the game. And after stumbling upon a blue key card, we open up this giant blue door, exposing none other than Bitter Giggles himself. However, it's not to be alarmed because Bitter Giggles seems to be upset with his actions in the past chapter, explaining that he doesn't know what came over him and he just wanted a good laugh. And now he seems to want to team up with us, almost doing so in order to redeem his actions from chapter four. And so as he supervises us in the corner of the room, we do a series of puzzles and eventually get the key to the door or at least that's what we thought however an alarm begins to set and we need to hide back in that same blue door where bitter giggles was but what exactly are we hiding from it looks like something similar to what bitter giggles was discussing at the beginning of the chapter when he asked is it gone whatever it is it's pretending to be ban ban and it's banging on the door in a very unfamiliar but deep voice telling us to open up and it seems to be getting more and more upset as we don't listen 
However, after some time, the creature does seem to leave us. Even though we don't see his face yet, we do unlock the very first button to unlock the scepter. And so, with our new counterpart in Bitter Giggles, we make our way back over to the safe zone. But of course, to no surprise, Sheriff Toadster doesn't seem to enjoy our choice of friendship. And to make things even worse, he now feels betrayed by us, explaining that he had a bad feeling the moment he saw us and wanted us to be used as bait. And against the queen's wishes, well, she insisted that we didn't, so he decided to give us a chance, exposing his true feelings towards us. And that's when a giant slug-like monster seems to jump down from the ceilings. However, I don't believe this is one of the naughty ones. Instead, it attacks Bambolina, knocking her off her platform, and eventually drags her off into the shadows, which Sheriff Toadster takes full advantage of this case, becoming the hero that he always wanted to be, and chases after her leaving us with just bitter giggles and of course Stinger Flynn. Making our way over to the door, you'll notice that we now have two green dots, meaning we're halfway there. And after a depressing monologue by Stinger Flynn, we head our way over to the next sector. This sector is called the Potentiality Sector, and once upon arrival, we notice someone who looks very similar to Bitter Giggles, however, they have been split in half. And it seems like the green side is basically pleading with the brown side to reattach each other. But unfortunately, the brown one doesn't seem to agree, and eventually kicks him off into the depths of the room. And if we follow them down into the darkness, well, we stumble across three switches. And eventually, after using our drone to open up each switch, we unlock the first part of the sector, which is the giant yellow door behind us. And upon opening this giant yellow door, we notice another version of Bitter Giggles. This one is combined with a purple form and a brown form, and it seems to be searching for the perfect joke, however, making sure to never make a joke about being trapped inside a kangaroo's pouch. But we have things to do, so we end up leaving him right where he is, eventually making our way back upside the stairs and that is when we see Ban Ban. Ban Ban seems happy that we survived the last chapter and he wants to help us out. So of course after putting together another button secretly underneath the stage we unlock a new room and this room seems to be filled with different whiter versions of Ban Ban. Statue like creatures or figures that we need to move after a series of puzzles in order to unlock the red door. And of course after some time we do eventually unlock the door and and it exposes this tiny little slug-like creature with sharp teeth and it goes running out. Now what's important about this little slug is it seems to have something to pry the door open. However, that's when we notice an even bigger version of that same creature standing above the door. And Ban Ban seems to notice as well as he asks us if that's our friend, to which obviously we respond no. And of course, what would a chapter of Garn of Ban Ban be without Ban Ban going through an epic battle with one of the creator's main characters? And right on cue, this giant monster jumps down, making its way towards Ban Ban and tackling him into the wall, knocking him unconscious. And that is when the mystery is finally solved, as this same character is the one that was talking to us through the secret video of the last chapter. He explains that we are his liberator, and even though he warned us to stay away, we had our chance to escape the mayhem, and we didn't. And now, we're gonna suffer the consequences, or at least we thought so before Bitter Giggles yells out to leave us alone, jumping on this creature's back and riding it like a horse and it looks like he took some damage in the process. See, he looks like he's almost been knocked unconscious towards the entrance of the door, but we still have some work to do, so of course we pry open the red door, grab the purple key card, and then go check out the aftermath. And it looks worse than we could have imagined, as both Ban Ban and Bitter Giggles are left unresponsive. We continue on throughout the sector, eventually making our way to a room filled with green light switches. And that is when Bitter Giggles comes up from behind, explaining that his head hurts, and then tells us the name of that creature that we just came in contact with. He tells us his name is Sir Dadadu, and when taking a good look at the character himself, it's just basically a giant leech-like monster. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the main antagonist of Chapter 6. And with such a resemblance to the Naughty Ones, almost looking exactly like them, I wonder if he has some relationship with Queen Bouncelia, as she seems to be the mother. However, we'll get to that in a future video. Moving on, we have another task at hand, and it's very important that we complete this task in a timely like manner. We need to get into that office inside of the sector, and the only way to do such a thing is to repair the switches inside of this room. 
Luckily for us, Bitter Giggles has that expertise, but we need to do something even more important, and that's protect him from all of the naughty ones who are trying to attack. The good news is we know that they hate the light, so we have two spotlights and one more on the ceiling that helps us protect him. And as he continues to fix the switches, we do our best to shine the light on the naughty ones, exposing them and getting them to flee in fear. Of course, Bitter Giggles is pretty quick, eventually fixing the switches and allowing us into the office to press the button to activate the third green light on the door back at the home base. And of course, on our way back, Bitter Giggles begins to explain that he appreciates the laughter of the naughty ones and begins reminiscing that the last time he told a joke, unfortunately, everybody yelled at him and they seemed to appreciate him. But this will come into play a little bit later in this chapter, but let's move on for now, as it looks like we have some new visitors at the home base. And those visitors include Nab Nab, who is now caged. Stinger Flynn is still here, and Ban Ban seems to have recovered well. But there is one extra character that we were missing, and one that I thought would be a lot more hostile in this chapter, and that's Kitty Soros sitting over by the door. Ban Ban explains that we only need one more switch in order to open the door to the scepter and we're gonna go ahead and get to that. But first, Stinger Flynn wants to have a word with us, of course. And after giving us a nice little sob story, basically blaming everything on us for his downfall and of course finding our child, he wants to show us one more little flashback. And it seems to take place right after the last one and now all the monsters are waiting for the bus. And that's when Stinger Flynn begins explaining to Ban Ban that they need to make it back to the beach and even though he doesn't want to go there that is where their destination is however this is where things get really strange as a bus does eventually pull up and captain fiddles almost seems compelled to get inside of it he walks over to the door and that's when it sucks him in almost like an alien abduction and this is only the beginning of these series of unfortunate events as the characters begin to wonder what exactly happened to captain fiddles another bus comes down the road and for whatever reason nab nab jumps into the street getting run over by that same bus and through all of this chaos another bus actually comes right at us hitting all of the characters waiting on the bench which eventually ends Stinger Flynn's flashback and of course for whatever reason Stinger Flynn doesn't give us any more details on to why he even showed us his flashback but we need to go speak to Bitter Giggles thankfully he has a new key card for us and he explains that Ban Ban already made his way over to the conditioning sector and we need to follow him and once we arrive you'll notice it's a giant orange room with a series of buttons all over it this could only mean one thing as we need to solve a puzzle and eventually after completing it we get into another more familiar room this, ladies and gentlemen, is the operation room, and we need to complete the syringe and mission in order to unlock the red door. But you'll notice, even though we need to find these eight lollipops, there seems to be two little monsters sitting on top of one of the operating tables. And they ask us if we've seen their father, who has more arms than us, which can only mean one thing. Their father is the syringe in himself. But of course, more on that later, as once completing and finding all eight lollipops, it unlocks this door with a giant black hole. And with nothing else left to do, we jump into said black hole, eventually opening up this new area in the game. This area is filled with giant trees. And for the first time in a long time, we finally see some greenery. And that's when we hear Ban Ban's voice, quickly telling us to run into the center of the trees to avoid none other than the giant Opilla bird. Now the goal of this, I guess you could say boss fight, is to activate the electric charge system around the trees in order to shock the giant bird. But the problem is there's no batteries to activate it and they seem to be all around the map inside of each corner. And anytime this bird sees us move, it will attack on sight. So we need to cause a distraction and that's when we use Mr. Kebab Man with a speaker in order to get the bird to attack it so we can move over to the batteries. And after a series of these different distractions, we do completely find every single battery and plug them in. So now the only goal is to get the bird to attack one last time. And when it does, it gets shocked by the giant battery operation field. Thankfully, it opens the huge doors inside of this room. And which is even better, it seems to shrink the Opila chick back to its true form. 
But of course, that wasn't our main mission. We do end up hitting the last button to unlock the door to the scepter. So we need to head back over to the main camp. And after we get there, Ban Ban decides to let Nab Nab out of his cage. And then on we go through the door to the scepter. And for the first time, this is when I realized that all of the characters that tried to kill us in the past now seem to be helping us get to one solid goal. We all seem to be wanting one thing, and that's to be able to fix this kindergarten situation. And so, the three of us walk over to the box that holds the scepter, and Bitter Giggles even explains this is where the syringe should be protecting it. However, he seems to be MIA at this point. And before we even get a chance to catch our breath, Nab Nab begins spamming the eject button for the scepter, which seems to upset Bitter Giggles. However, it seems to do the trick as the scepter begins to rise from the box. But of course, as soon as we think we've completed the scepter challenge, we notice that it's missing a piece now. And believe it or not, this is only the beginning of the worst possible outcome. As Sir Dadadu enters the room, trying to sabotage our plan and take the scepter from us, threatening us that we need to find the piece, and explains that if we don't, he's gonna eat Kitty Soros outside. However, before he can even finish his sentence, Ban Ban decides to stick Nab Nab with a giant syringe filled with gervanium, making him an absolute unit of a monster, which starts off what else a epic chase scene that happens in almost every chapter of this game and there seems to be a naughty one chasing ban ban and i as we try to escape to the elevator however what's even worse is that we leave the scepter behind in this case and run chasing bitter giggles and ban ban in order to escape and as we are about to approach the elevator of course, Bitter Giggles decides that he can't come with us. He explains that he wants to stick around because they appreciate his jokes on this floor and that this is his one chance to have a true audience and he's going to take it. But we have no time to lose. We make our way over to the elevator with Ban Ban and just as we're about to escape, that is when Sir Dadadu shows up and he has possessed at least half of the monsters in this game. These monsters include Kitty Soros, Bitter Giggles, Opilla Bird, and even Ban Balina, to just name a few of them. He explains that both Ban Ban and I will be a fine addition to his army, and that means he wants to corrupt us next, explaining that he wants to finish what the Queen couldn't do. But thankfully, Ban Ban decides to hold them off for us, and we jump into the elevator. However, he gives us one last mission, look for the surgeon and unfortunately that is how garden of ban ban chapter 6 ends leaving us on once again another cliffhanger but hopefully you guys enjoyed it i know it was a bit odd for a chapter of garden of ban ban just when we thought we were getting some answers things got even more confusing some of the characters that we thought were going to be evil ended up turning out good and it's a whole mess at this point but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you do want to see more story breakdowns and we will do that for this chapter do me a big favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one until then peace out